In this video, I'm going to explain how to employ Simpson's rule using Microsoft Excel. Again, let's just quick go over the concepts and then we'll show how to input that into Excel and compute. So we've seen that we can approximate a definite integral using right endpoints or left endpoints or midpoints to get a more approximate a more accurate approximation we can also use the trapezoidal rule which took the endpoints of your sub intervals and then connected those together and these line segments with possibly non-zero slope fit the curve better and therefore the area approximation is going to be better okay if you want to get even better approximation instead of going by line segments over your fixed sub interval what you can do is go by parabolic arcs Okay, so what we're going to do is split the interval up into however many sub-intervals we want, however many pieces we want to, and then approximate the given function by a parabola over each sub-interval. Now, it's actually showing that in the picture, but it's doing it so well you can't almost tell the difference between the ex actual function and the, the, para the parabola. Okay, so you notice if you increase your sub-intervals, your number of sub-intervals, the area approximation gets very good, very, very fast with Simpson's rule. Now for that you've got to do a little bit more work though. Alright, so let's explain how that's going to go. Okay, going over to our scratch work here, we're looking at the interval from 1 to 6, our functions 1 over x. We're splitting it up into 10 pieces, so we've got 10 sub-intervals. Alright, so all of our partition points are 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, etc. Now the idea for Simpson's rule is we don't want to have to, going from to say the trapezoidal rule to the Simpson's rule, we don't want to have to compute the function at any more partition points. But to determine a parabola you need three points, not two points, like that's only enough to determine the line that passes through those points. So the idea here is let's create new subintervals from our partition. So instead of looking at the 10 subintervals that we determined from the original partition, let's look at these five new ones, which we think about by extending them, by doubling the width. Right? So instead of going from 1 to 1.5, we're going to think about the new subinterval going from 1 to 2. And then we're going to use these three partition points, the left, the mid, and the right endpoints, to determine the parabola over top of the interval of our new interval from 1 to 2. All right. All right, now to compute the, the midpoint, the 1.5, we could just use the left and the right endpoints, add them together and take and divide that by 2, take their average to get the midpoint. And we're going to see that's going to be important when we go to do this in Microsoft Excel. All right, so now our new intervals are 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, and 5 to 6. We've got five of them, and we're going to approximate the function by a parabolic arc over each of these subintervals. Okay, so to compute the the um, area underneath the parabolic arc, we're going to use the one third rule. So for each one of these, what we're going to do is find the quantity one third times f of the left endpoint plus four times the value of the function at the midpoint plus the value of the function at the right endpoint of our subinterval, our new subintervals here. And then that's all multiplied by delta x. All right, so that's the so-called one-third rule. That tells you how to compute the area underneath um, a parabola over a certain fixed subinterval by just using the left, mid, and right endpoints of that. Okay, so again, this is from our note handout. This rule is very tough and very tedious to actually write out. But again, I have it written in a little different way. It's delta x over 3 times y sub 0, which is the function value at x sub 0, plus 4 times the value at the midpoint, plus the right endpoint. If we're thinking about the interval or the subinterval from 0 to 2, or x sub 0 to x sub 2, then the midpoint is x1. Okay, and you do that for each subinterval and then add them all together. Okay, adding them all up you end up with this formula. It's one-third times the function value at the left, or the first time, first partition point, plus four times the next, plus two times, plus four times, plus two times, and you continue that pattern until you get to the very end, and you just take that function value once. Okay, again, this is a little bit, has to do with the overlapping of some of these things. The left and right endpoints for the subintervals are going to be used more than once, going from one to the next. Okay. All right, now let's employ this in Microsoft Excel. All right, so to do Simpson's rule, we've got 
two ways to approach this. We can just write down each of the partition points, compute their function values, and look at our final result, our final sum said to multiply each of these values by an appropriate number, either 4 or 2 or 1, and then add them up, multiply that by 1 third, and multiply that by delta x. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so we can multiply the values in the two columns to our left. We get C43 times D43. Okay, multiply them together. 1 times 1 gives us our 1. And then we, we repeat the calculation. Okay, go to the lower right, hold and drag it down. It computes all these multiplications for us. Now, to compute the total area approximation, what we're going to do is go below, and we're going to do 1 third times the sum of those values we just computed. That's the value in the bracket from the handout. And then we're going to multiply that by our delta x, which in this case is 0.5. Okay, add them, them up, we get 1.7931, etc. Now, that's fine. That'll work. All right, but what I had to go through and do was write in 1, 4, 2, 1, 4, 2. That's kind of inefficient. A better way to do this would be to use the area part, uh, the approximation formula for the area under the parabolic arc over each of our subintervals. Now for this, you got to remember, we're not thinking about the original partition where it was 1, 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, etc. We're thinking we have n partition points, but we need to think about this as determining five new subintervals of length 2 times delta x. So now we've got from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, etc. All right, and now we've got to compute the function values. So it's still 1 over x, so it's going to be 1 over um, b61 in this case. Okay, and continue that down. Okay, but like we did for the trapezoidal rule, we're going to use the area approximation for each interval. Okay, so let me just remind you of the formula. All right, it's right here. It's 1 third times the function value at the left, plus 4 times the function value at the midpoint plus the function value at the right times delta x. And then we do that for each of our subintervals. Okay, so let's come back and actually compute that. Now again, I'm going to go to the line bef the line um, but beneath this row because we want to do it for the first subinterval, the second, the third, the fourth, and finally the fifth. All right, so in here we're going to put in equals and then one third times. This one's going to be a little bit more complicated to write out. What we're going to do is say it's the value at the left, which we know is uh, C61, plus the function value at the midpoint. It's four times that. Now the function we're working with is 1 over x. We don't have the midpoint written down. We don't have the value of the midpoint written down. So we're going to actually have to compute it. So we're going to do 1 over the midpoint. Now the midpoint for us is going to be the average of our left and our right endpoints. In this case, it's going to be the average of 1 and 2 for the first subinterval, and that's coming from B61 and B62. So we have to do another parentheses, add them together, B61 plus B62. We highlight those columns as we go. Divide that by 2, close that parentheses. So we're doing 1 over that average, 1 over the midpoint, and then we multiply that by 4. Okay. Okay. And then we've got to add on the value at the right endpoint, which in this case is uh, C62. Okay, and then we got to multiply that by finally delta x, which in our case is 0.5. Now, gives us a little different number than what you saw above. Repeat the calculation for our five subintervals. And now all we need to do is add them together. So we're going to go below and hit sum, add them up, and we've got the same number we had before. Again, this is a little bit more efficient. Once you write the formula down one time, you've got your approximation. Okay, and you don't have to write in the multipliers 1 and 4, 2, etc. Now, let's actually compute this, or compare this to the actual value of this integral, this definite integral, which is the natural log of 6. We get 1.79175 approximately. Notice Simpson's rule is quite accurate, even for this these small number of subintervals. It's accurate to two decimal places. All right, using the same partition, what we saw above, the trapezoidal rule only gave us 1.811, so that's quite a bit further off from the actual value, which is 1.791759.